Hi everyone, I'm your host, Dr. Terry Haddad, Vice President of Community Initiatives at Community Services for Children. Welcome to the Parent Project Podcast. This work stems from our vision for an engaged community where every child thrives and every family succeeds. CSC has been serving families for over 50 years, and we know that parenting can be hard. We're inviting local doctors, teachers, counselors, social workers, and other experts to provide perspectives to help parents maneuver the sometimes challenging role of parenting. Hi, we are delighted to have Kelly Cathy, a licensed social worker, here with us today to talk about children's mental health and how the nervous system affects behavior. Welcome, Kelly. Thanks for coming. Hi, thank you for having me. So, Kelly, what is your specialty? Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in children's mental health. I have been working with children in subcapacity for about 10 years now, children's mental health for about 10 years now. I have my own private practice in Elkins Park currently, and I ironically got started working in children's mental health because I was doing an internship in the child psychiatric unit at CHOP while I was thinking about going to medical school. So I sort of just fell into really loving working with kids, but I really loved the relationship aspect of it. So it was like really important for me to have that relationship piece of things versus just like the clinical diagnostic piece of medicine. So decided to take the route of therapy. Well, I'm sure you're doing great things in Elkins Park for families, and we're hoping you might have some advice for our families. So children's mental health issues seem to be on the rise. Is that correct? Or is it more diagnosis? How is what's happening in that world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm seeing in my world is post-COVID has really spiked challenges with children's mental health. We're just seeing like a range of different impacts that that period of time had on a child's development. So we're thinking about like, even from like when a child was in utero, a baby was in utero until now versus when a child was maybe in kindergarten until now, like there's different impacts in the range of that developmental period. So we're seeing the rise of depression, anxiety in young children. We're seeing like I see a really a large cases of separation anxiety in young children. I'm also seeing behavioral concerns, a lot of just like general sort of children being what we call dysregulated, which is like up lots of ups and downs, lots of being able, un, unable to kind of like get calm, if that makes sense. Sure. What, what, um, particularly in young children, what types of challenges are parents having with young children post COVID? I'm, I'm always sort of thinking about it in the context of like where the child was when COVID hit. So if we're thinking about even right now, a, a three-year-old child, which was, you know, two to three-year-old child who was in utero in, you know, in mom and mom was pregnant at the time of COVID. Even that we're seeing some pretty intense cases of separation anxiety at that age, because essentially what happens is like the stress of the mom during that time, because you're pregnant and you don't know if you can go outside. You don't know if COVID's going to have detrimental effects on your fetus or you. So that stress actually impacted the child's nervous system. It impacted the child's development within the, within the womb. So children from ages, I would say two to probably kindergarten right now, which is six are, I'm seeing a lot of pretty extreme separation anxiety because that's that initial period of trust building like in the womb, but then outside of the womb was like not there because we couldn't trust the world, right? The adults couldn't trust the world, if that makes sense. Fascinating. I hope that that changes naturally now that we're post-COVID. Tell us about the nervous system and how the nervous system affects behavior. Is is that part of connected to what I just asked you? The mother's nervous and so Mm -hmm. the nervous system has effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, totally. So I I studied neuroscience in college, so I geek out about this Mm -hmm. stuff. I love it so much. So the nervous system is essentially like a central hub of like our whole bodies is the nervous system. So we have our brain and then our spinal cord and then all the nerves that kind of go out through the body. So that's sort of like the central hub of information. 
our nervous system is always collecting information externally from, you know, our environment, but then internally from whatever's going on, like physiologically internally. So what happens is when, when we experience stress, that impacts our nervous systems because that's the central hub that is gathering information and out, inputting and outputting information. So when we experience stress, that's going to either like heighten, really heighten our nervous systems and make us kind of go into like something we call fight or flight, which you'll see, you know, fight or flight might be like we're on edge or like one little thing kind of makes us go off or we have, we're having bigger reactions to things like this typically will look like more like anxiety, like symptoms. So there's a lot of a big fear response, a big anger response. We kind of see that in both ways. So when we're looking at that in the context of little children, when we're noticing that little children are on edge or irritable or anxious, that's when we know their nervous systems are, are a little heightened, right? And then on the flip side of that, when our nervous systems can also kind of go into a depressive state, which looks more like dissociation or depression, some kids will just like zone out or check out or... Yeah, it, it looks kind of opposite as, as the other side of things. These are both signs that our child really isn't like in the optimal range of where their bodies and brains can be. And so when a parent or even a teacher experiences children with those types of behaviors or reactions, yeah. what kinds of things can mom do at home mm -hmm. to help? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the biggest thing when it comes to really little children, so we're talking about children before, I want to say like the age of six. So before the age of six, kids really can't regulate on their own yet. Before the age of six, this is particularly important. And the, this concept that I teach parents in my work is called co-regulation. And co-regulation essentially is when your child is borrowing your nervous system. So they're helping regulate their nervous system based off of yours. So this can be really powerful um, because as the adults in the room, how to take care of our own nervous systems and how to figure out a way in the mess of parenting to get centered, right? Then that is really what helps the child learn how to stay centered and connected to themselves. So when I say centered, it doesn't mean calm necessarily, and it doesn't mean emotionless. What it means is like feeling centered in your experience so that it's not spilling over into the child. I mean, if we just talk about it really candidly, like parenting is really hard, right? It's frustrating. It's taxing. It's exhausting. It's the hardest job that you do. So we're always constantly, our nervous system's like aren't regulated a lot of the time because it's just crazy raising young children, right? But to be able to stay centered and connected to what's going on for you so that that doesn't spill over into your child is going to be the best way that we really help that co-regulation process work through. And again, when we're thinking about a second piece of it is when we're thinking about really little children, one of the biggest things is that they're still really learning how to control their impulses, manage their emotions. Like they're still so messy before the age of six that like they have a feeling and it's coming out everywhere, right? It's coming out of their arms. It's coming out of their legs. It's coming out of their whole bodies. So to stay grounded and centered and say, you're feeling upset right now. We can't hit when we're upset, but let's do something else instead, right? So we're staying centered and grounded we're acknowledging the feelings, but then redirecting the behavior is really what we want because that's how we help children know like, okay, it's okay to be upset, but it's not okay because all feelings are okay, but all behaviors aren't, right? That's the difference. So yeah, that's kind of what we want to work towards. And on days when you can't do that, you just say, you just apologize. You know, mommy had a really big reaction. I'm sorry. I want to work through that. I want to get better at this, right? I want to work through this together. Um, cause you have to be realistic about your expectations for yourself too, you know? So, well, it, it really is hard when your kid is having a meltdown to just stay 
Mm-hmm. I know you said don't stay calm, but that's how I did it. I tried to stay calm. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But it is, it's parenting is tough. And I think that one title of a future podcast could be all feelings are good, but all behaviors are not. Yeah, you know, I like that. That's really, really good. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff. Any other advice you'd like to uh, leave our parents? It's been wonderful speaking with you today. You know, I always say this to parents that you all are the true heroes, like truly, because this is the, the hardest, but most important job that you have in your life. And yeah, it's, it's the most courageous thing you do in your life. So I always say that like parents, you're the superheroes and yeah. So all of you listening, you all are superheroes too. So Um, Yeah, I hope you can take that with you as you go into your day. Feel like a superhero. (laughs) Oh, Kelly, thank you so much. For more information, you can find Kelly's work at www.kellycathyplay.com. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for listening. To learn more about the Parenting Project podcast, Project Child, or Community Services for Children, please visit csceinc.org.